Scientists have discovered evidence of phosphorus in an ocean not on Earth. The life-sustaining element was found inside salty ice grains shot into space by one of Saturn's moons. A mystery celestial body covered in thick layers of haze is located near the gas giants in our solar system. This body is Titan, a moon that orbits Saturn. Scientists have been fascinated by Titan for many years. The planet Earth is not the best planet to live in. That's what the writers of a paper published in the Astrophysical Journal believe. These researchers examined more than 2,000 exoplanets in the possibly habitable zones of their stars using information from NASA's Kepler Space Telescope. The most fascinating aspect is that more than 120 of these exoplanets are gas giants, with each one possibly having one or more moons. Also, it may surprise you to learn that there is the best potential for discovering alien life on these planets. These moons could have liquid water, in addition to being shielded from cosmic radiation by gas giants, which can also give them an atmosphere, a magnetic field, and other features that Earth only managed to achieve via enormous effort and chance. Giant exoplanet moons are able to get it at no cost. The catch is that no life has yet been observed, despite astronomers' best attempts and observations using the James Webb Telescope. Nevertheless, there are 131 moons orbiting gas giants in our solar system alone. Many scientists think some of these moons may not only be the birthplace of alien life, but also ideal locations for colonization. For a very long time, they thought that all of the solar system's satellites were just flat, lifeless rocks, similar to our moon. However, several of these moons have taken astronomers by surprise. NASA's Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 spacecraft conducted a close-up investigation of Jupiter's moon Io during the early 1970s. Their analysis showed an anomaly. The mass of the small moon was higher than predicted. These celestial entities are usually made of silicates and water ice, but Io is the densest moon in the solar system because it is full of iron and silicate rocks. The thin atmosphere of Io piqued scientists' interest even more. However, the Pioneer probe's instruments malfunctioned because of radiation bands around the moon, making a complete analysis difficult. Thankfully, the Voyager probes corrected the issue in 1979. The scientists were astounded by what they saw when they eventually obtained high-quality photographs of Io's surface using more sophisticated equipment. They saw that there were no impact craters on the moon. NASA initially assumed Jupiter was attracting all the meteorites, but they soon spotted lengthy lines in the photos, indicating volcanic activity. Jupiter's gravity and the gravitational forces of its nearest satellite, as it turned out, compress and stretch the core of Io, heating it. As a result, molten streams of silicate magma rich in sulfur erupt to the surface. This sulfur coats the craters and the whole moon's surface with a deadly material that, when paired with radiation, renders any living form lethal. However, there are some comparatively safe areas under Io's surface. As the magma cools, it forms what is known as lava tubes in the rock, where water can be stored and microbes might potentially live. On Earth, for example, sulfate-reducing bacteria metabolize sulfur compounds and even pure sulfur as part of their life cycle. That is why they prefer to live in soil and water high in hydrogen sulfide. If we want to colonize Io, we'll have to follow in the footsteps of these sulfur bacteria and build underground bases far away from the volcanoes. Otherwise, there's a good chance that volcanic eruptions will destroy all of the colonist structures, as well as the colonists themselves, within a few years. Underground bases can also greatly minimize radiation threats, but no matter how hard we try, they will not give comprehensive radiation shielding. Furthermore, even the colonists' most well-insulated electronics will fail, as did Pioneer 11. However, is there a place in the solar system similar to Io, but without the dreadful radiation levels? Triton is another moon with active volcanism. Voyager 2's 1989 flyby of Triton yielded the first exact data on this celestial body. Instead of seeing a dead, bland rock on Neptune as scientists had anticipated, the photo showed intricate topography. Furthermore, at minus 235 degrees, enigmatic black explosions appeared in certain locations and blasted straight up into space, indicating that cryovolcanism is at play here. Ordinary water burns under such conditions, just like how lava does on Triton's surface. The only thing that could survive is latent bacterial spores that are waiting for favorable conditions. 
Beyond Io, astrobiologists were captivated by the Voyager mission's explorations of Jupiter's other moons. So they excitedly investigated other moons, looking for unique features and maybe even indications of life. Among these celestial bodies, Titan, Saturn's largest moon, stands out as an ice globe with a golden hazy atmosphere that totally conceals its surface. Titan is the second biggest moon in our solar system, with only Jupiter's moon, Ganymede, being slightly bigger by 2%. Titan surpasses both Earth's moon and even the planet Mercury in size. This dark and chilly world may turn out to be the ideal spot in the solar system for life. The passing Pioneer 11 and Voyagers were unable to capture its surface, which was covered by thick clouds. Subsequently, a special voyage was required to penetrate beneath them. Huygens successfully arrived on Titan on January 14, 2005, and discovered not just clouds but also something no satellite of a planet in the solar system has. A thick atmosphere. The moon's surface is obscured due to the production of haze in the top layers of the atmosphere under the effect of feeble sunlight which prevents visibility. This gigantic moon is the only moon in the solar system with a dense atmosphere. However, as Huygens discovered, the atmosphere itself is extraordinarily dynamic, with strange whirling winds carrying warm air streams from pole to pole. This causes dunes to grow in Titan's equatorial regions on a daily basis, exactly like in Earth's deserts. The dunes here are made up of hydrocarbon granules that resemble coffee grounds rather than silicates. Titan is the only globe besides Earth that contains standing bodies of liquid on its surface, such as rivers, lakes, and seas. Titan's atmosphere, like Earth's, is mostly nitrogen with a trace of methane, and where liquids fall from clouds, flow across its surface, fill lakes and oceans, and then evaporate back into the sky. Titan may also contain an underground ocean of water. Titan has a radius of around 1,600 miles, which is approximately 2,575 kilometers, and is roughly half the size of Earth's moon. Titan is located around 759,000 miles, 1.2 million kilometers, from Saturn, which is located approximately 886 million miles, 1.4 billion kilometers from the Sun, or approximately 9.5 astronomical units, AU. One astronomical unit, AU, is the distance between Earth and the Sun. It takes over 80 minutes for sunlight to reach Titan from the Sun. As a result, sunlight at Titan and Saturn is approximately 100 times fainter than it is on Earth. Titan takes 15 days and 22 hours to complete one orbit around Saturn. Similar to the Moon on Earth, Titan has a tidal lock in synchronized rotation with Saturn, which means that Titan constantly faces the planet during its orbit. Saturn orbits the Sun in around 29 Earth years, a Saturnian year, and Saturn's axis of rotation is inclined like Earth's, resulting in seasons. However, Saturn's longer year results in seasons that endure more than seven Earth years. Titan has seasons that last more than seven Earth years and a year that lasts 29 Earth years. This is because it revolves closely along Saturn's equatorial plane and has a slope relative to the Sun that is roughly the same as Saturn's. Titan's underlying structure is unknown, although one concept based on cassini huygens data implies it has five major layers. The deepest layer is a 2,500-mile diameter core of rock, particularly water-bearing silicate rock. Unlike many moons, Titan's surface is not made up of traditional rocks. Instead, its terrain is made up of ice blocks, which are virtually a solid at minus 180 degrees Celsius. Like other gas giant satellites, Titan has liquid water in an 80-kilometer deep subterranean ocean. Extreme microbes, like those found on Earth, might survive here. However, this is far from the sole possibility for extraterrestrial life on Titan. A shell of water ice surrounds the core, a particular form referred to as ice VIs that can only be found at extremely high pressures. The high pressure ice is surrounded by a layer of salty liquid water with an outer coating of water ice on top. This surface is covered with organic molecules that have rained or otherwise settled out of the atmosphere in the form of sand and liquids. A thick atmosphere surrounds the surface, which is proof that Titan is a mysterious planet. Despite the fact that four different spacecraft have flown by the moon, it still holds many secrets. Why is Titan the only moon out of 290 moons in our solar system to have a thick surface? Where did its thick atmosphere come from? What caused its lakes and oceans to form? And does it have the ability to support life? 
Large bodies of liquid on Titan had been hypothesized since the Voyager probes passed by in the early 1980s, but they were not verified until the Cassini mission landed in 2006. Unlike Earth's oceans, which are formed of water, it has been proven that Titan's lakes and seas are made of liquid methane and ethane. On Earth, they are gases, but in Titan's severe cold, they are liquids. Astrobiologists speculate that life of a unique kind may have originated from these extraterrestrial sources of water. These lakes and seas, which can be seen in these magnificent radar photos, are often found in Titan's polar regions and may be extremely vast, with some of the largest being similar to North America's Great Lakes. They are supplied with liquid by rivers that break through Titan's icy environment and are extremely deep. Some regions are thought to be over 200 meters, 656 feet deep. Titan's lakes and seas are supposed to have developed from the breakdown of methane and nitrogen in its atmosphere. However, this remains a mystery. These elements condense into clouds and eventually fall to the ground as rain or snow. On Earth, life itself is primarily responsible for replenishing the methane supply in our atmosphere. A 2020 paper in the Astronomical Journal announced the finding of cyclopropenylidine, a carbon-based chemical in Titan's atmosphere. This chemical is a very unusual discovery since Titan's atmosphere is too warm for this kind of chemical. These chemicals are normally found in interstellar dust clouds, which are located in much colder and distant regions of space. But Titan is very close to the Sun, which makes its environment warmer than the cold interstellar dust cloud environments. Could there be a continual source of this molecule, unseen by science, that produces so much of it as to be visible from Earth? After all, extraterrestrial life may make a good contender for explaining such phenomenon observed on Titan. Biological markers, like substances that have similarities with DNA and RNA, might also be present on Titan. But Titanian life would need to develop a way to replace cellular metabolism with water. The fact that astrobiologists have previously effectively modeled a membrane that permits liquid methane to pass through is what is most surprising. This membrane, which is an exoticism made of molecules of nitrogen, carbon, and hydrogen, may provide the basis for exotic cryogenic life. Methane, on the other hand, is a byproduct of many species' metabolism. It comes from the most basic biological sources, such as those linked with peat bogs, rice fields, and livestock such as cows and sheep. So, could the presence of methane on Titan suggest the existence of life? One thing is certain. If life exists on Titan, it will be unique to anything found on Earth. As we all know, life on Earth depends on water. Thus, the absence of liquid water would prevent life from existing on Titan's surface. While we're on the subject of life, it is worth noting that creatures that look like the ice worms inhabiting North American glaciers are currently gliding across Titan's dunes. Plus, they may be substantially bigger on a moon with less gravity. Although, the possibility that humans could ride them, as in the Dune movie, seems unlikely. Either way, we'll hear more about Titan life shortly. NASA intends to send the Dragonfly mission to Titan in 2027. It won't just be a probe, it'll be a quadcopter that can fly over the surface for lengthy periods, looking for abnormalities before descending to investigate them. Even if this mission is unsuccessful in finding evidence of life on Titan, we should begin planning more ambitious trips for the future. Titan is perhaps the solar system's most viable planet for colonization, despite seeming frigid and uninviting at first. To create a base, colonists on any given globe will need a sizable quantity of building supplies. NASA engineers intend to use rocks and dirt on Mars because there aren't a lot of other options. Meanwhile, Titan has an infinite supply of both liquid and solid hydrocarbons that are easy to turn into polymers and molded into any required shape. However, these strong, lightweight materials are not as suitable for building greenhouses or labs as Martian rocks are. Furthermore, extra hydrocarbons may be returned to Earth in the future. The issues of food and water often come up when thinking about long-term living outside Earth. Importing fertilizers and depending on a fragile, closed reproduction cycle would be necessary for cultivating food plants on Mars. However, on Titan, fertilizers like ammonia, methane, and nitrogen are already present in the atmosphere. Their presence would make it possible to grow vegetables in specialized greenhouses and possibly build low-risk, self-sustaining ecosystems. Since water is limited to the polar ice caps on Mars, supplying warmth would be the primary problem and would need long-distance travel. On Titan, water shoots straight out of the ground. 
it may be readily filtered, even if it includes around 10% ammonia, which functions as an antifreeze. Rivers would also be of great benefit to the colonists because they could be used to generate hydroelectric power. Moreover, since Titan's atmosphere is oxygen-free, combustion is physically impossible. Also, there will be no need to worry about accidental electrical sparks occurring close to masses of liquid fuel. The only source of electricity on Mars would be solar panels, which would require ongoing cleaning after sandstorms while the astronauts are wearing heavy spacesuits. In addition to having an atmosphere that is primarily composed of poisonous carbon dioxide, Mars has very little atmospheric pressure, just 0.59% of Earth's. But since Titan's gravity is 1.5 times higher than Earth's, all you would need to survive would be a suit to shield you from the cold and an oxygen-filled mass that could be filled with enough water from the ocean below the surface. To prevent explosions, the breathing reservoirs must be made incredibly dependable. You could even introduce cyanobacteria with stronger UV lights into Titan's subterranean ocean and wait for them to start producing adequate oxygen. The main differences between these operations and current notions of Martian communities would be the lack of pressure fluctuations and the requirement for radiation protection. All of these activities may be conducted from a base, but stronger insulation is needed not only to keep the colonists comfortable, but also because humans on Titan with their equipment will produce a great deal of heat. Without adequate insulation, the base and the colonists would literally melt the hydrocarbon soil and sink into it. Furthermore, flying and swimming are more practical modes of transportation on Titan than driving. NASA is already working on creating a unique hydroplane that will be able to glide across Titan's oceans and hover in its dense nitrogen-methane atmosphere. The most amazing thing, though, is that you can fly on Titan even without the use of specialized machinery. It's the ideal location to realize the age-old human fantasy of ascending to the skies with only a wave of our arms. Any colonist may become a bird with a pair of folding wings because the gravity is just 14% that of Earth. But in terms of accessibility, Mars still beats Titan. Reaching the red planet takes less than a year, while getting into Saturn's orbit would need at least five years. But this isn't such a big deal if we want to make sure that we survive as a species in our solar system. Ultimately, Earth and Mars share the same fate. The Earth will no longer be in the habitable zone when the Sun emits 40% more heat in just a billion years. In a few thousand years, the ocean's water will begin to boil and evaporate and the vapor that builds up in the sky will cause a greenhouse effect that will transform our world into a furious inferno resembling Venus. The Sun is expected to become a red giant in 4 billion years, causing it to expand and swallow nearly all the planets in its vicinity. Mars, a blazing hot rock, will become the nearest planet to the Sun if it lives, just like Mercury does now. Our colony will just vanish if it is present. But after such a catastrophe in the inner solar system, the gas giant's moons will thrive with enormous quantities of warmth and grow much cozier for tens of millions of years. These moons around big planets could be new places for people to live, thriving for a long time while our solar system changes. So, which moon do you think you'd like to own in the future? Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click on the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.